Hello, my name is Rachel Glendenning, and I'm a speech language pathologist at Johns Hopkins Hospital here in Baltimore, Maryland. I currently work at the Outpatient Neuro Rehabilitation Clinic here in Baltimore, and I'm a member of the Ataxia Clinic here as well. I wanted to first start by saying, what is a speech language pathologist? A lot of our patients have never heard of this before and are unaware of what we can actually evaluate and treat. Speech language pathologists can evaluate and treat difficulties in speech, eating and drinking or swallowing, voice, language, and cognitive functioning. In patients with ataxia, speech and swallowing are often impacted. I'd like to first go over what you might walk into in an evaluation when you walk into a speech language pathologist clinic. A speech language pathologist may start by evaluating the different movements, strength, and coordination of your tongue, lips, and different parts of your face and mouth to see how those things are moving and how they're working. Some things a speech language pathologist may ask you to do could include saying, ah, uh, as loud and as long as you can to check your voice quality, your volume, and your pitch, as well as your breath support for speech. You may be asked to read different words, sentences, and paragraphs out loud so that a speech therapist can check your articulation and how clear your speech sounds. You may also be asked to do some repetitive speech sounds out loud, such as pa 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 or alternating sounds such as patika patika patika. Once a speech language pathologist has completed their evaluation, they'll come up with a personalized treatment plan for you. Some exercises you may be asked to do could include strengthening exercises. For example, if a therapist noticed that your tongue was a little bit weaker than it should be, you may be asked to use something like this in clinic. This is an IOP bulb. It can be used to test your tongue strength, but it can also be used as a resistance exercise in treatment. The therapist would place this bulb directly on top of your tongue and ask you to squeeze up as hard as you can. It can also be used to strengthen your lips by placing it between your lips. This bulb is typically attached to a machine that can add resistance to it to continue to exercise your tongue strength and hopefully maximize it for both speech and swallowing. A speech language pathologist may also provide you with exercises and tools to exercise respiratory strength or breath support for speech. One tool that we often use in our clinic is something called EMST or expiratory muscle strength training. I'm going to take it out and demonstrate that for you all. You may be asked to wear something like this nose clip to make sure that all of the air is coming directly out of your mouth and nothing's leaking from your nose when you do this exercise. Your speech language pathologist will help you set this up in the clinic. But again, you take these two pieces, pop them together like this. I'll put the nose clipping on and then you'll be asked to blow hard and fast into this device, like this. This tool can also be used to increase resistance um, by turning this knob clockwise. Again, please do not turn the knob if you're given this device unless specifically instructed by your speech language pathologist. This device can be used to exercise your breast support for speech, but can also be used to exercise muscles for swallowing, such as the muscles used for a good cough response and also the muscles in your throat for good airway closure. Other exercises for speech may include using compensatory strategies, such as slowing down, projecting or getting louder safely, and over articulating your speech sounds. Those are often used to make sure that your speech can be as clear as possible while you're talking with your friends, family, or others in the community. A speech language pathologist can also evaluate and treat impairments or difficulties with swallowing, such as difficulties with eating and drinking. 
This evaluation may look somewhat similar to the evaluation a therapist may do with speech, but they may also ask you to eat and drink various liquids or solids in the clinic to see if there's any coughing, if you're feeling that anything is getting stuck, um, or if you're having difficulty with completing any of the meals. Some common signs and symptoms of difficulty with swallowing may include drooling or food or liquid falling out of your mouth forward, coughing or throat clearing while eating or drinking, feeling like things are slipping the wrong way, um, or feeling that things are stuck in your throat and difficult to get down, including pills. If you're experiencing any of those signs or symptoms, I would highly recommend a formal evaluation by a speech language pathologist. Following an in-clinic evaluation, your speech language pathologist may also recommend further evaluation of your swallowing, which may look like an x-ray study or a study where they pull out a long tube with a light and put it through your nose, over your throat, and watch you eat and drink with that little camera. These tests are important to give us more objective information on your swallowing to really tailor the treatment towards your specific needs. Once swallowing has been evaluated, your speech language pathologist will provide a specific set of prescriptions tailored towards your impairments. It's really important to note here that no, there is no one size fits all, right? Everybody's swallow is different and what they need for their swallow is different. So rather than try what I'm about to show you at home, I would recommend consulting a speech language pathologist first. Your speech language pathologist may recommend different strategies, exercises, or diet modifications, depending on what they see on an evaluation. Some safe swallowing strategies that we often recommend may include things like making sure you're sitting up during your meals, taking single bites and single sips at a time, keeping a nice slow pace rather than eating super quickly, and making sure to minimize distractions with meals. So making sure that you are minimizing talking while eating and also walking around while taking pills, for example. So making sure you're focused on your swallowing. A speech language pathologist may also recommend various diet modifications. One diet modification that is common, especially in those with ataxia, could include thickening liquid. I have a powder thickener that you can scoop into whatever liquid you'd like to drink. The instructions are labeled on the back here to tell you exactly how much to put in for the amount of liquid that you'd be drinking. You could also purchase pre-thickened liquids here. I brought two with me today. This one is a nectar level consistency, and you may also be asked to drink something a little bit thicker, like a honey level consistency. So again, you could purchase pre-thickened liquids or the powder liquid and thicken yourself at home. Rather than jumping to thicken liquids right away, a speech language pathologist may also ask that you try using a straw, specifically with ataxia, because difficulties with swallowing typically originate from challenges with coordination. Straws are often helpful to assist in the coordination of the swallow. So you could see how that goes as well. But again, I would recommend asking your speech language pathologist first and participating in a formal evaluation before trying any of these things at home. Your speech language pathologist may also prescribe a variety of exercises to target specific muscles that may be impacted. This bulb that I brought out earlier may also be used to exercise tongue strength for your swallowing, not just your speech. The EMST device that I mentioned earlier, as I said, can also be used for a good cough response and to strengthen the muscles for good airway closure. Some other exercises that you may be asked to do include things like a hard swallow, which I can demonstrate for you now. This one's the easiest to learn you close your mouth nice and tight and you swallow hard, imagining like you're swallowing a hard candy or something that feels like it's stuck. So you close your mouth nice and tight and swallow hard. Another exercise you may be asked to do could be something called the masako, where you stick your tongue out and swallow. This one can be a bit challenging, but I can show you here now. 
And you may also be asked to do something called the Mendelssohn, which is swallowing and trying to squeeze your Adam's apple up at the very height of your swallow, holding it for one or two seconds, and then relaxing. That one is very challenging as well. One last exercise you may be asked to do is called a chin tuck against resistance. I brought a ball with me today, but you may also be asked to use a rolled up towel, or you could even use your fist like this, but I will show you with the ball. You place the ball on your collarbone here, and you squeeze down for two seconds as hard as you can. And up. In some cases, Patients with ataxia may experience challenges with memory and attention or other cognitive functions. This can also be formally evaluated by a speech language pathologist who may provide you with a variety of strategies and exercises. Some basic strategies that a speech language pathologist may recommend include things such as using a planner, using daily to-do lists, setting phone alarms, and again, those planners and calendars could be either written or on your phone. It can also be helpful for patients to establish specific routines that work best in their life. The more of a set routine that you have in your everyday, the easier it is for you to remember what it is that you need to do. For example, if every morning you get up, you have your coffee, you take your medicine, and you do your exercises, the more of a habit that that becomes, the easier it is on your memory for you to recall and remember to do those things at home. Also, the more organized your space is, the easier it may be to find those important things. I know in my home, I put my phone, my keys, my wallet all in one place by the front door. If they're not there, I may forget where they are, but because they have a home in my home, I remember where they are at all times. So that can be a really helpful strategy as well. As far as focusing in the moment, it's important to remember to take mental breaks. If you're noticing that you're losing focus on a task that you're doing, taking a few minutes to stand up, maybe stretch, have some water, could all be helpful so that when you return, your mind is a little bit more clear to focus on the task at hand. It can also be helpful to eliminate distractions as much as possible. Of course, understanding that it may not always be possible, but if you can turn the TV off or turn the music down, those can help with your focus as well. Speech language pathologists play a vital role in evaluating and treating impairments in swallowing, speech, and cognitive functioning. If you're noticing that you've had any of the symptoms that I've mentioned previously, I'd highly recommend finding a local speech language pathologist to evaluate and provide set, a set of exercises that you can use at home. You may be wondering, how do I find that local speech language pathologist? I know that in progressive ataxias, such as spinocerebellar ataxia, it can be hard to find specialized services for your diagnosis. If it's challenging to find a therapist that specializes in progressive ataxias, I'd recommend looking for at least a neuro rehabilitation center with a speech language pathologist or looking for services that provide treatment to patients with, a, with Parkinson's. Oftentimes, those speech language pathologists have the tools necessary to evaluate and treat patients with an ataxia. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope that the information I've provided you can be helpful and I wish you all the best. Thank you.